Hi, everyone. Welcome to our TTFF 20 q and &As, and thanks so much for joining us. This year, our full film program will be screened online, and we're extending the screen so that from tomorrow, Wednesday, all film bundles will be available every day until 22nd of September. Our new media exhibition at Medulla Art Gallery will now run through to the Saturday, 19th of September. If you're joining us via Facebook Live, please feel free to post all of your questions in the comment section below, and we'll address them during the session. Don't forget, you can check out, check out our full film list and pay for film bundles at online.ttfilmfestival.com. We'd like to thank all of our TTFF sponsors. TTFF 20 is given leader sponsorship by the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, contributing sponsorship by Public Bank Limited, which shall train around the table, limited sponsoring our TTFF 20 online industry events. So, Bienvenido, Daisy. Welcome to the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival. Thank it feels, you. <laughs> it feels a little bit weird speaking to you in English, but I'll try. If you don't understand anything, let me know. What? If you do not understand anything, let me know. Okay, okay. Uh, so tell me a little bit about your film, La Imagen del Tiempo, Timeless Savannah. Yeah. Mm. First of all, I just want to say that I'm really happy uh, about being the festival for two reasons. Right now, because I'm talking with you, I'm, you know, I'm really happy because <laughs> I know you, uh, we are from the same school and that's really, really uh, wonderful for me, you know. Um, and the second is because my family come from Trinidad and Tobago. I have never been there, so in a kind of way to have a film in the festival is a kind of way to go back to to my, uh, to the place where in kind of way come from also. Mm -hmm. uh, from my grand, grand, grandfather come both to Venezuela. Okay, so um, what do you want me to say about the field? Uh, well, first of all, tell me what influenced you to make this film because in seeing the film, you understand me clearly, right? Can you hear me? Uh, no, no, I lose you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. So I would like to know what influenced you to do this story because in seeing the film, I saw I saw a lot of you in the film. I saw a lot of your personality in all of the characters. In Alejandro, who kept, who wanted to write for a living, and Rita said, "Nani puede vivir de I saw you <laughs> when. Uh, Rita, who is taking photos in Havana, and another character said, uh, all of you foreigners take pictures the same. Like yeah. I imagined that's how it was for us as well, as foreigners taking pictures or filming Havana with our context from a foreign, from a foreign context. Uh, so I'd like to know what was your inspiration for making this film, because it felt very meta in your execution of it. Okay, uh, my inspiration was a play of theater I wrote before go to Cuba, uh, before to start this, the, the film school. And in this moment, uh, the, the migration in Venezuela just started. And uh, when I arrived to, to Cuba, uh, I arrived in the middle of the changing, no? And in a kind of way, it was similar to I don't know, I was 30 years old, it was in the middle of changing my life, in the middle of changing in, in, in Venezuela, in the middle of changing in Cuba. So I wanted to try to make a, make a portrait of a country that is in the middle of changing with characters that are in the middle of changing, that maybe they don't have the proper answer of their life or like they're in politics, they, they don't have the proper answer in that moment. So I tried to to make a portrait of the, that the specific time and then that specific sensation. And I, I changed uh, several times the, the kind of movie. So I, I shoot a movie thinking about to make the movie in the, in the edition room. Uh, so we have the history. And you know the influence were like uh, memorias of desarrollo, the as well, like uh, 
for Sul Godard, there is uh, Pietro Marcello that work a lot of with the uh, uh, font footage. So I, I wanted to do something that maybe I wouldn't do in an, another moment of my life. Uh, with the few money I had, with all my obsession together. They say, okay, uh, I won't play only with an obsession. Well, I will try to play with all, all, all the obsession I can. And uh, in a kind of way, every character has a different obsession that represents different obsession for me, from, from archive, from to be, uh, right now I'm from nowhere. So in a kind of way, it, all of them are in a nowhere space, or, or Rita and Alejandro are in, in this nowhere. Me, uh, like an immigrant, uh, they like an immigrant in their own country. Right now, I'm an immigrant in my own country. If I go back to Venezuela, it will be an immigrant. I, I will be in this middle place. So I, I wanted to try hard to, to shoot a precise moment of changing, like a crossfade. It's a kind of abstract, but it's like a whole, you should, you should a specific crossfade. It's not the past, it's not the future, it's like the present. How you, you shoot it? At the end you shoot it and immediately it is past. But you're thinking in the future. So the film, filming is always about time. So how to shoot the present? So that was the, the abstract idea. So we shoot with this story, we shoot with the art, we already had the archive film, but when I was shooting, I used to leave the character, the, the actor that are my friend to, in a kind of way, improvise, you know? I, I, used, I, I, I used to work with the, with what before and after the really scene. And sometimes I use that, the, the, the part that was before or after the really scene I wrote, because it was, the end was more interesting. So it was like a, like also a game of language. I mean, uh, like I told you, I, I try to play with all the obsessions, like how I play all with the language and documentary. How do I play with the SI field? I mean, some people say, okay, that is fiction. Some people say it's documentary. So then it's, it's this between. And that's what's the between in Cuba in that moment, right now even. Uh, and even in Latin American political situation is like this in, in the middle right now. So I felt that the Cuban generation that is my generation, I mean, my same age are in, in this middle situation. So I live, so I met people that was leaving that moment, leaving the school, leaving Cuba to go to the United States. I don't know. I'm talking too much. You, you, you can <laughs> interrupt no, in any moment you want. Uh, I understand. I understand. And I think you can feel the authenticity of that because uh, there were a lot of moments where I couldn't really tell if this was documentary or fiction because you had a fiction story inside of a fiction story as well. But because mm -hmm. all of the performances felt so authentic, I didn't know when they were acting and when they, they weren't acting. So I'd like to know, especially the way it was shot as well, you didn't make much of a difference between the moments that were that they were out of characters in their film, own film. So I'd like to know uh, what was the inspiration be that, behind that and if it was intentional to mix the documentary and, as, and fiction aspects as much as you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was intentional. Um... Edel, who is the actor who interpreted um, Alejandro, is a really close friend, and we have work in the school and different things, and, and also Mai is a really close friend. Uh, so I, I work with them before in different exercise. And then we started to talk about the field, no? But we used to talk about um, politics, um, no, religion, everything, but and what to do with the with the film and how to shoot it, and uh, I took a lot of things from from them, from their characters, from the moment they were living. I mean, uh, uh, Ma is a really wonderful photographer, uh, and 
And the three of us wanted to work with this. And the most, one of the most important thing was, okay, it was the first movie for them, for me, also for the photographer. And how do we do to play with this, to put it uh, more natural, no? And we started to, to, to create exercise with Adele, mainly to, to make him feel more familiar with the camera. So when we were rehearsing, was the camera. When we were one, once in the 1st of May, uh, that is the, the day of the workers, I don't know if it's right in English, the primero de mayo, Dia de los Trabajadores, we shoot with him only walking just to, to test. So uh, then we used to, to play with each other. For example, I used to play with Mai. Mai is a really intelligent actress. So I used to say something to Mai that Adele didn't know, mm. or vice versa. For example, you know, uh, Mai, I won't cut, uh, but Adele doesn't know it. So if I don't cut, you keep rolling there, you keep playing. So that's the, the a kind of rule. I mean, if I don't, even if I don't say action, you are, you are in the character, if, even if I don't say cut, but and you finish the scene, you keep uh, playing. And it was for me pretty interesting because uh, it, they both are really, not, really good actors. So, and they are really open. So it's allow the possibility to mix everything. And also the editor. The editor is uh, Liana Dominguez, and she used to work with actors. She, she, her sister is an actress, so she really know how to cut or how to uh, edit thinking about that thing. So uh, I think she's, she was really important in the process because, uh, because we shoot in this way, we had a lot of possibilities in the movies. So we have really different possibilities. So it took a, like a year to, to edit uh, all the, the field because there was the, the archive, it was the, the rehearsing, the research, and so. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we, are, we are really a, a small team. We were, we were like four people. I mean, the mm, sound, camera, mm, production, uh, me and the actor. I mean, I tried to play with, I mean, to do it with friend. The producer was Anna, so we, we were really close to each other and we were a really a small crew, so. Mm. You, in your film, you blended documentary and fiction a lot, and you also try to blend uh, your ideas of past and future a lot with the present. And you speak, spoke a little bit about being a, an immigrant and being in a place of nowhere. And did you think a, a lot about uh, your film was a fiction film, but it's based in a uh, context of the reality of Cuba. You spoke a little bit about the embargo with US. And I'm curious to know what, how, what was your approach like filming this film from the context of someone who is not from Cuba? How did you connect with the actors to help them get into the mindset and stuff like that? How are you uh, directing the film? as someone who is not from Cuba, but speaking about the reality of the context of Cuba. Okay. Um, before I arrived to Cuba, I arrived to Cuba in 2014. Uh, I was, uh, before the school, I was in, engaged uh, with a Cuban girl in Venezuela. We were in love like for two years. And she was living in Venezuela. So I went to Cuba once and I visited Cuba once before the school. And I knew a kind of thing about Cuba from her, no? but uh, it wasn't enough. No? When I arrived to the school, I realized 
that most of the people that were studying the school didn't know a lot of things about Cuba. Mm -hmm. And that scared me. I mean, I say, okay, we'll be here three years and, and it cannot happen to me. So I started to shoot everything, shoot everything, everything. So I went to the CDR, I went to the um, veteranos, I went to every place I could to shoot. I traveled around Cuba shooting like a, and then when everything started to change, like a USA embassy, I went to shoot. When I arrived Obama, I went to shoot. When I arrived at Rolling Stone, I went to shoot. And I was reading, reading. I have my, like a, my Cuban history library in, in the school. So I, I read Fidel Castro's speech. I read uh, geography, uh, history, basic history. Um, uh, and I started to watch a lot of documentary from Cuba and travel and meet people, people that is, uh, that is, uh, is pro-government, people that is against government. And I started to shoot them, interview, interview. So my idea was, okay, we'll shoot this. One, to understand. Two, to recognize my ignorance. So, because I'm right now ignorant and innocent to the, and I knew this, I need to, to have this approach and I need to shoot it. And then in seven years, if everything keeps changing, I will shoot again. And that was the idea, the first idea. So when Fidel Castro died, I went to shoot. Uh, the, the school didn't allow me to go. And I, I, I went to shoot uh, in Santiago. Uh, I went to shoot in, uh, in Cienfuegos, in the Central Nuclear. So, uh, I had uh, to be to be part of the school. It was like a, to have a special permission to do all these things. So I recognized that because I was foreign from Venezuela and from the school, I could shoot a lot of things that uh, uh, normal people in Cuba, like my friend, couldn't shoot in the way I was shooting. So I take advantage of this. That's why I have all this footage. In a moment, I say, what the hell do I do with, what the, hell, what the heck do I do with the footage? You know, if I went, so when I started to think about the, the, the future film, I say, okay, we'll take these footage. Um, let's mix everything. Uh, at the end, I'm talking about changing. There is a lot of other footage that I, I didn't use, but I will use in five years. <laughs> I understand completely. I think, you know, I used to shoot everything as well when I arrived there. And uh, I wanted to know a little bit more about the 16 millimeter film that appeared in, film, in your film, which were used as archive images for the character of, while the director was speaking about his, I think it was his great grandfather or grandfather. Tell me a little bit about that. Okay. Um, I really like to work with archive field like uh, archaeologists that is searching this old material, no? My campismo, remember, you make that exercise, uh, was about a uh, uh, amateur filmmaker from San, San, San Antonio and the, the grandson so, that used to work in the school. So I started to, to, to make a research about archive field. And I found a different family, like three different families that had this um, archive field all with dust uh, in the, almost in the garbage. So I took this, this uh, family archive and digitalized it. And they are like different uh, uh, source, like four. One of them was a guy from um, it's a town near to the school. So the son of this guy had this material and he didn't want this material, almost gave it to me. Oh, I'm like, hey, yeah, take it, give me this and take it, Ciao, bye, bye, I don't want to see this anymore. And when I was digitalizing, I realized that this guy was really in love with the woman he was shooting and has some moments really beautiful. And you keep thinking about that, no? How do you shoot somebody you love? How do you keep it in the, in the memory? And 
And I keep thinking about that, about this image. They might find this image from the beginning of the revolution. They might find this image. And I create this character that is inspiring a real character from the Second World War, that was a spy who has to pretend to, to be dead uh, to don't be killed. So I keep thinking about the memory again. All these people remember it. He doesn't have the image of how, 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 how the memory works. And how the memory works with somebody you love and you now feel. So I create this, this character that represents another point of view of the politics and the history and also about the time and love and like an Alejandro, but in another time. Uh, and I, we create like, a, we didn't have how to digitalize anything in that moment in Cuba in the school. So we create, and we didn't have money. So we create a artisanal, artisanal, artisanal uh, um, telecine. This was like a projector that project to a, a crystal and the crystal them to a, um, a screen and you shoot it. And you could shoot it with 4K, 2K, HD, the clean crystal. So also this process was really personal. I used to do it in my room, in the school for two years, researching and researching all this material. So, uh, yeah, this is how I found this. Uh, and it also belonged to another project where I want to go to this place where they were shooting this in the 60 years ago and to shoot right now. That is another project. Then. Nice. <laughs> and uh, looking, back in, uh, looking back now, in your film, you, you spoke a lot about ideas of past and future and how the past is somewhere in between, the present is somewhere in between, in between the past and the future. Now looking back, at, looking back at your film, your film is past. So how has it changed you? How do you look at your film from the context of now, from mm -hmm. your present looking back at your film, which was shot in the past? Okay, it's a good question. Uh, I think that represented a moment of my life, uh, a specific moment of my life, a specific moment of Cuba. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's right now the past uh, is sometimes it's astonish me that uh, sometimes the people that uh, used to approach me, approach to me in the festival are young people, I mean, really younger people, I mean, people from 20 years and 18 years that uh, approached me to talk about the film, sometimes are not the older. So that's really curious to me because uh, I don't know, I, I, for me filming and art have to change you. No? And for me was a, a turning point because it was not only about filming, it was not only about to learn. I mean, I, I learned a lot of things from that film in the cinematographical way, but also in the personal. I mean, I have to see my some demons, some, some thing of my life in that moment that were not really clear. And I don't know if I would shoot a film like this again, and I'm happy to say that because that was what I, I wanted. I mean, I wanted to make a film that I, 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 I wouldn't do in the, with 40 years. I mean, I wanted to make a film that represent that moment, the crisis and changing. And I don't used to use, see it lately. I have like several months we'll see it, even in the festival, I try to don't, don't see it because I, ha I want to have a kind of distance from the film and watch it in the future to see what happened right now, you know? But I remember, and that's, that's everything you film, you always think about this part. I didn't I like too much this part anymore. I, I have to do it in this way. Mm, 
maybe in that moment when he was shooting, and I think that that was really good from feeling, you know, that you're not 100% happy, or but it represents mm -hmm. something it's like a book. I mean, at the end when you when I I try to see a filmmaker or I read a, a writer, I like to see that war, but I like to see also the war of this writer filmmaker in that specific moment of his life. I want to read what, what's going on in that moment in the life of this filmmaker, of this writer, in the specific moment he should this film, to understand what happened. Well, I certainly saw a lot of you in your films, so good job. And thanks for sharing it with us. I think we don't, we don't have much time left, so, so we have to leave now. But thanks a lot for joining us. Muchas gracias por venir. Eh, qué bueno verte, hermano. Qué bueno verte también.